Hello everyone, I'm Prophet Success and today I want to remind you that God can be trusted. Now, trusting God, I know that it is a very difficult thing. Why? Because we grew up in sin. Most of us grew up in sin. And because we grew up in sin, what we know of are the remedies that are usually made available to remedy whatever sin that we have done. For instance, sickness. Sickness is not of God. Sickness comes to you because you have sinned. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name would turn to me, I, the Lord, will in turn heal you. I will heal your land. Meaning that you must have turned away from God for you to be sick in the first place. So whatever remedy that you are going after, your solution is not that remedy that you're going after. It is God. Your solution is turning to God. So today I want to show you that God can be trusted. However, it requires cooperation from you because if you are going to trust God, you cannot expect God to move alone. God wants to cooperate with you. You need to cooperate with God. So quickly, before we go into scripture, let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we invite you, Holy Spirit of the living God, and we ask, Lord, that you take over, Lord, this message. I ask, Lord, that, my Father, you amplify your message into your children's ears. In the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that you give us the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of revelation, that we may heed of your word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now let's go quickly to the book of Hebrews 10, 23. It reads as follows. So now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. In short, the scripture is saying that God can be trusted because he keeps his word. His word cannot fall to the ground. Now, what usually keeps men from experiencing the manifestation of God's word. It's what we are going to look at right now in scripture. So let's go into the book of Genesis 12. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. It reads as follows. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. God is telling Abraham, get out. Of your father's house get out of your kindred to a land that I am promising you that I will give you to a land that I will show you and this is what God is telling us pertaining to his word God is saying that I will heal you I will heal you I will heal you remember what I said before if my people who are called by my name will turn from their ways I will heal you please keep the scripture in mind Verse 2, it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Verse 4, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lord went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from, Hana, from Haran. This is the age of Abraham when God had spoken to him, when God told him, leave, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, go to a land that I promise you and there I will bless you. I will make you into a great nation. You, one person, will become a great nation. You know what a nation is? Nation is not one person. Nation is people, millions. Just like I am in a nation, you are in a nation. This is what God is saying to Abraham that I will not multiply you into three people, into five people. I will multiply you into a nation, a nation the size of the sands of the sea. Now, this is key. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Now, God spoke, and because he spoke, it requires you to cooperate with God and make that move and move towards the direction that God is telling you to move to. You stagnating on making those moves, it delays the manifestation of your blessings. This verse 4 says that Abraham was 75 when God told him, get out of your countrymen, get out of your land, get out from your people, get out from thy kindred, go to a land that I promise you. But not only that, remember what I told you about that scripture. 
if my people who are called by my name would turn from their ways. That requires you and me first to make the initial step. God cannot help you unless you and me do the required movement that will make God help us. So if God has promised you something, and that's something, the Bible, what you need to understand is that it's full of laws and principles for God to bless you. This needs to be done. There are steps to receive God's blessings, okay? There are steps to receive God's blessings. Some of the blessings, you already inherited them when you came to Christ Jesus and accepted him as Lord and personal Savior. Some of them, you need to do active steps. The reasons that some of you have not experienced the blessings of God is because you have not turned from your ways. Some of you are sick of God knows what, and you are praying to God, and every time that pain hits you, what you are usually reaching out for is not God. It's not the word of God. You are not reaching out for prayer. You are not commanding that mountain because the Bible says that you must command that mountain. All you need is the faith the size of the mustard seed. God needs you to just have a little belief in him. Size of a mustard seed. Just turn to that issue with the word of God and command that issue out of your life because here's the thing, Jesus said that in my name ye shall cast out demons. So it is not God that's going to leave heaven and come and rescue you from a demon. It is you that needs to cast out that demon. So what you usually do is you go and you reach for that medicine cabinet. That medicine cabinet is your death because God's word is not at work in your life. Your faith is on that medicine it's not on god okay it's not on god so god requires you to not reach for that medicine pray for that issue pray for that problem whatever it is it can be sickness it can be headache whatever you call it pray 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 reach in for that word i for one i'm a person that now is going at i believe three years or more I can't even keep count, but I know that it's more than two years since I've had a headache and I've taken pills for it. Yes, I do get headaches, but what do I do is I pray. I call out that spirit of headache and I tell it out and it goes away. So God needs you to work with that little faith. The first time I started, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it years ago. You know, I, I used to pop pills and I hate pills. But one day I said to myself, you know what, God, if you are truly God, Really, this pain will go away. I'm not going to take any medicine anymore. I started calling out the pain. I command you in the name of Jesus out. And headache was gone. And I couldn't believe it. And this is what God needs. He needs you to just make that first step. Show him that little faith. That little faith that you have in the direction in which he's calling you into. Take that first step. If it is in his word, he has spoken it to you. He has said it to you and me. Therefore, you need to take steps towards the accomplishment and the fulfillment of his word. Let me show you why most people are complaining that God is a liar. God's word cannot be fulfilled. God takes forever to answer our prayers. This right here is the reason. Please page with me to the book of Genesis 11. I'm going to start reading from verse 31. It reads as follows. And Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife. And they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. Now, Abraham, when God tells him, leave your people, leave your kindred, leave that place, the Chaldeans, God did not include his father to say, take your father with you. You see now, God honors the covenant. And when he's speaking to Abraham, he is speaking to Abraham and his wife. He's telling him, leave your kindred. He's not talking to his father because every other person outside of the covenant is a weight, is an anchor that will keep you grounded where you need not be grounded. Now, here we see Terah, the father of Abraham, is the one that's leading the way where Abraham is called to go. What I want you to know is that the Bible says honor your father and mother. Yes, honor them. But in honoring your father and mother, you need to fear God. Fear God. Honor your parents. There are different levels there. What Abraham did is he feared his father. He couldn't tell his father, now, no, 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 stay in Chaldeans. I 
I'm going to leave. Now let's see what that extra bag of weight did. Verse 32 of Genesis 11. So the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died in Haran. Another version of this scripture it tells us that when Abraham and Terah got to Haran, Abraham and Terah stayed there until he died there. You see, that is a person that is getting out of course. God has called you to go to a particular land. The manifestation of God's word, the manifestation of you becoming a nation, the manifestation of Abraham becoming millions of people was dependent on his move. His move to get to that land. And when he gets to that land, then God was going to start multiplying him. At what age did God call Abraham? At age 75. The Bible does not say clearly between the ages when Abraham left the Chaldeans to when he got to Haran. But that season, that time, that window there of disobedience, because it was disobedience. So Abraham disobeyed God in this period and he stayed with his father, who was of all the age. If Abraham is 75, the father, God knows how old he was. So he stayed there, waited for the father's death that window when he was in Haran was the window that was wasted in Abraham's life. Now keep in mind, if Abraham had moved straight from the age of 75 to get to Canaan, it would have reduced the time span that brought Sarah to desperation so much so that she gave her husband to the, the help, Hagar. Ishmael would not have existed. Ishmael would not have been born. Abraham would not have had Isaac at the age of 100. Sarah would not have had Isaac at the age of 90. The reason that these couples came to a state where they were so desperate is because of the detour. The reason that you have not received that healing that you're hoping for, the reason that you have not received that precious job that you're hoping for, the reason that you, the business that you want to start, it has not gone from zero to 100, is because you are still helping yourself. It's because you are walking in disobedience. It's because you are praying for that pain to go away. You are praying for that cancer to go away, but your trust really is in that chemotherapy. Your trust is in that medicine shelf. Your faith is not in God. That's the reason. Because when you take active steps, your steps shows God in whom you have faith. And whom do you fear? Abraham feared his father. So he obeyed his father, Terah. They dwelt in Haran until Terah died. And only then, Abraham had the guts to move into Canaan, where God had called him to be. But by that time, desperation had set in. The reason that that job that you've been applying for, you are still struggling to get, or you haven't even gotten to a point where you're qualified to even have the job, is because you're constantly helping yourself. You're trying to bribe your way into that position. You are scheming. You are trying to bring down other people's names so that your name can look brighter. But here's the thing that God wants you to do, is to leave all, all your trusted sources and trust only in Him. And only when you trust in Him, He will move you. He did say in His word, if my people who are called by my name would leave whatever their ways would turn from their ways and return to me returning to god meaning putting all reliance all trust all your resources to god and not lift a hand lest god tell you to lift a hand and not move to a particular direction lest god tells you to move to that particular direction only then will you see the experiential hand of God moving in your life. I pray that by this message you are blessed. Stay blessed always in Jesus' name.
Amen.